Hey, it's Candia Raquel, founder of Centro de Poder, and you are at the Sensual Sessions podcast, the place to be to sense your fire, to share your flame. And if you haven't subscribed already, please go to www.centrodepoder.com and get yourself signed up for these weekly episodes delivered on your inbox. And today we have a very special guest. This is Cynthia Resendiz. She is a chemical engineer, a Pilates teacher, and a voice coach. And she's an immensely interesting woman that is going to share with us today about how to awaken your sensual voice. Welcome, Cynthia. Such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Candia. I'm so excited to be here. So excited to have you here, too. So tell us, how, how did you discover your own voice? because I was ashamed when I was a kid, you know, I started singing and someone said, wow, you sing so loud. <laughs> so it was just like, okay, I won't sing anymore, which is what happened with most of us, no? We get shush very little when we are kids. And I always loved this theater part. I have been in theater groups, so I knew that I have a voice and that I have to train it and uh, that I have to work with it and things like that. But it was till I had a tracheitis after going to influenza that I lost my voice. And it was really a shame. I was just like, wow, what am I gonna do? And even when consulting experts, it was just like, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing else you can do. And that was not true. I found Royal Love and he's an expert on vocal revival, and he's also an expert in voice coaching. So I took his course, and I realized that it was what I needed. I started a podcast before doing that, but then I started feeling hoarse. You know? I was not really trained for doing it for a long period of time, you know, so. Then when I started getting hoarse and <coughs> this feeling of it's something is not good, something is not right, I started taking this course. And from there, I was invited to become a coach. And of course, I was delighted to do that. And the real thing is that we never think about voice as who we are. It's just like something you can do, and you can take it for granted. And whenever you can step for a while and say, OK, how do I sound? What I'm doing, what others are perceiving from me, then you start on the voice track. So that's why I started with voice. As you said, I have Pilates training, I have Qigong training, and I have many other disciplines under my belt, which are mostly physical, and you would never think that a voice is a physical thing. You know, voice is firstly breathe. So that's how I started in this. And now I'm loving it, helping others to find their own voice to find their own voice. You mentioned that your voice is who you are. Would you tell us more about that? Totally, yes. Whenever you see someone in the street, on the street, or even on video, it's just like they have this moment of expectation. It's like, okay, how are we going to sound like? And suddenly you have this, hello, how are you? <laughs> really shocks you, right? It's just like, uh, hold on, it doesn't match. It it's doesn't like, match. Yes, you have this gorgeous, <laughs> it's just like a crush, no? Just like, and, and it happens with men and women. I mean, it's not specifically on one gender. So you're not only your looks. And the other thing is that voice is how you connect with others. Voice is vibration. Some people, it's not only hearing you, they are feeling you, even if it's online. I mean, techniques are different. If you are in person, that is, if you are on screen, but they can feel you. I mean, they can really connect with you. So that's how voice works for us. That's why you are your voice. And if you really think about it, it's the only thing that you produce. 
that you can share. Just like, hey, hello, I'm here, and I can make happy sounds, and I can make sad sounds, and I can make angry sounds. No? So it's who you are, it's how you express yourself, it's how you present to others in the world. How you present to others, to the world. And so interesting that you mentioned that the voice is first and foremost breath and it's something that you produce. So if we go like to a chemical level, because you're a chemical engineer, like, yeah. <laughs> like what other person is perceiving, like in person, is your exhalation. Like this person is listening the vibration of your carbon dioxide atoms that were inside your lungs and they, they were propelled physically using your core muscles like deep down from the pelvic floor and your deepest abdominals and your diaphragm and how this this air vibrated in your trachea through your vocal cords so it's actually very intimate to listen to someone and at the same time that's why it's so important to to speak your voice so you are heard and why so sometimes it's so challenging to listen to someone else because it's like really acknowledging the existence of of the other and we live in a western society that is like sterilized and void void from from human connection while actually craving for it we see it like in we want to connect via social media we we want to connect but we ourselves are not really connecting we are not speaking our voice and we are not either uh willing to listen so that leads me to remembering one of the first times i listened to myself in one of those Walkmans that were for reporters that you could record on a cassette. And I mean, well, I, I am a, a girl from the 80s. So I used to have a Walkman and that was, it was expensive and it was, was like a wonderful thing. But like, I freaked out when I listened to my voice. It was like, <gasps> and precisely it was like, is this me? Like, really? Is this me? And like, I was like, I don't want to talk any to anyone because everyone is gonna know how I sound and I sound. So, and it was really um, a blow to to my self image and my self concept in a way. And I believe that most, if not all, of the entrepreneurs that, that are like beginning to record themselves or yeah like people that that is doing public speeches or even I don't know you're you're gonna present something a proposal at a board meeting and you may have the same experience that I have of freaking out with your own voice. So what do you have any like advice to not exactly. feel so bad about Absolutely. our own voice? That's so common because we have a different way of hearing ourselves. What you hear inside your head is your bones resonating. So <laughs> Inside your head, you sound great. Yes, it's just like, oh, I like it. And you're used to that. But whenever you record yourself, it's just like, oh boy, you're kidding me. And it's always a shameful part. It's just like, no, you're not, I mean, I'm not that voice. Because you cannot relate to that. There are two different things. The thing that, that is happening inside your head, your voice, also your vibration, and the thing that is happening outside. And for most of us, it's shame. And it's also kind of, okay, I sound like that, that's it. Forget about it. Just like, close, 
I don't want to see, <laughs> I don't want to hear. And that's the refusing to take. I think that's when you can do something. It's not that you will achieve the voice that is in your head, that something that it's not going to happen, but uh, voice is about self-awareness, self-knowledge, and also self-confidence. Because you have to hear yourself. So yes, for sure, the first step is recording yourself and hearing it out loud without judging yourself. It's just like, okay, that's how I sound. When I record it, what would I change? What would I like to modify? Voice has five elements that we can control. It's pitch, pace, tone, melody, and volume. We're not talking about all of them <laughs> right now, but it's not that you can program your voice. You can speak differently, and you can try, you can test, you can have fun with it. The real thing is to embrace who you are and how do you sound. It'll be just like, okay, I sound like this, but I'm thinking. Or you can go here and say, you know what? This is how I sound when I'm happy. Or you can go there and this is how I sound when I'm angry. And that's fine. The thing is that we get tricked, just like, shh, kids, stop doing that. Forget about that. And you yourself as a kid are just like, I can't do that. No, that's, I think, the first part that we have to accept. What happened to you? Why your voice is not getting out yourself? Second part is, as I said before, shame. Maybe you were in school and there was this girl or, or this boy and you came just like very nervous and whenever you tried to speak to them, they were just like, ah, mm, eh, sounds, strange sounds coming out of your mouth and it'll be just like, <gasps> you will turn around and laugh. I mean, so our voice is so ingrained to our life that we don't see that. It's just like, I have never thought about that. I really have never thought about that. So that's what happens. And it's also a part of your vulnerability. You don't want to have other, have other see you and hear you in your worst moments. So it's kind of putting yourself back, putting a wall, just like, you know what, this is what you get, and this is how I speak, and that's it, that's my communication style, and if you agree, that's cool, and if you don't, that's cool. But this wall between, we avoid our connection. So as you were saying before, it's just like, it's too intimate. I'm not sure if I'm gonna share that with you. And the, the other part that I think it's also important, we have this character. We think that we have to sound just like. It's just like, okay, big movie, and now the artist, sounds like this and everybody wants to sound like this <laughs> it's just like yeah that's great that's she or that's he but you can have all these voices of the man just like hello honey or hasta la vista baby no and uh -huh. uh -huh. yes. those sounds and, and you think that it's just like yeah that's cool i want that for me and we start mimicking which is good because in that part, we discover how our, our voice can sound. But it's not a conscious process, and it's also not intended to really embrace how is your voice and how you can sound and the difference, I mean, the subtlety on what's happening with your own voice and your, all, your, uh, your own process. So yes, that's what I think about voice, and that's what I think why it happens, and I'm here to fix that. One, one voice at a time if it's <laughs> necessary, but he, yes. For me, it's just like an invitation. It's just like, let me hear you, With the real you. Not the thing, not the voice that you build for this stage of your life or for this conversation. Really, let me hear you. Let me know who you are. Let me hear your dreams, know if that, because whenever we're experimenting something, our breath gets shifted. 
it's not the same if I'm here just enjoying with you what we are talking about than if I came running because I have to go to pick up my kids. <laughs> you know, my voice is going to sound totally different. Yes. That's something also very important. We're used to avoid other sounds when we speak. It's just like, okay, put yourself kind of a filter and you're only going to speak words. That's cool. That's great. And, and we have this monotone thing and we're not that used to the, <gasps> no, yeah. <gasps> and then, uh, and you can really enjoy someone really embodying what's happening to them. Whenever you are telling a story, whenever you are speaking with someone else, whenever someone is speaking to you or you are, or they are really hearing you, it's just like, okay, okay. So it will become a real conversation. And there are also studies that said that using words, a human can only recognize 12 emotions, but using sounds, you can identify 24. What that means is you can tell if I'm <sighs> mm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a lot more, much better than if I tell you, sir, sir, mm. this is. Sometimes words are not um, really representing who we are and what we're and what we're feeling mostly. Yeah? And what we're feeling mostly, yeah, it's key what you say about accepting your voice and like this is how I sound because sometimes people tell you you're screaming at, at me and it's like no, I am not screaming at you. I am talking at you, how I talk when I am angry. And then you're making a clear statement on the expression of yourself on the given circumstance. And even in regards to the respect of the boundaries to the other person, that I am, I am not disrespecting you for speaking to you from where I am feeling which is actually an expression of honesty and sincerity. And yeah, we instead wear masks like, yeah, I, I am, how you doing, baby? Or like, yeah, right? Like, I don't know, like wear on vocal stereotypes to mask ourselves. And those are crutches. And I mean, if you need them to, to move ahead socially, like by all means use them, but acknowledge that is something beautiful inside your voice, that it's you and your own true expression. And while you get confident about it, you can just announce to, to the world, like, this is how I sound. And I am, I am talking to you. Please listen to me. And then this leads, leads me to how the voice understood as you're talking can be a means also for, for self-knowledge. Like, okay, now I realize that I have problems or challenges with confrontation, with telling people what I don't like with stating my limits because I am struggling to, to talk when I'm angry or I, I, I am struggling with, with saying I love you first. I mean, who wouldn't struggle with confessing your love? It, it's like w when you speak those words, you are more naked than naked. <laughs> I mean, because you really bear your soul, you bear your uh -huh, your breath, your, like your your essence. And then, um, when when we are in a seductive mood, then can be also challenging to 
yeah, to be there, like be you in that circumstance without wearing a, a mask of voice and and mimicking. And then um, also the appropriateness, like there are a certain tone of tones of voice that you don't want to apply with with a kid. You're gonna frighten that kid. Or if someone is disrespecting you and you wanna be this super kind and polite socialite, it doesn't match. And when you're on an intimate situation and you are speaking childishly, I mean that's not the place for for your inner child to be out. That's that's the place to show up as the woman or as the man that you are. And I feel that people would benefit, especially on how to become more comfortable in expressing their sensuality. Um, and also, I, I wonder if this has like an anatomical basis, because if, for example, I talk more like from my nose, it has a different uh, aspect of concentration and and mental discourse if I'm talking like this and it's different if I am like feeling more the, the resonance of, of the voice in my chest in my sternum like around my heart than if I intentionally involve the feelings and sensations of the pelvic floor so what can you share about discovering and awakening your sensual voice? You are right in so many levels, but I have to put that before. <laughs> before I jump into the awakening of your sensual voice, because I think those are things that we have to put clear on. You said before this part in which, don't shout at me. No? In that moment, you can go back a little bit and say, okay, why he's perceiving or she's perceiving me as the shouting person? Yeah, for sure, maybe you put your volume up, going back to the five qualities that voice has. From there, you talk about this self-knowledge, self-awareness, but also the communication part. And you said, for sure, there are different places for us. Part of the problem is that we are used to the stereotype. It's just like, okay, the expert will always sound boring. And it's your job to pay a lot of attention. Because I'm gonna give my lecture on this and me. So it's just like, please. No? So, <laughs> yeah, I, and whenever I'm exaggerating, because that's what I do most <laughs> of the part, it's evident. It's just like, yeah, you're right, totally right. So when you ask me about how do I connect with that part, I will say, go back to your breathing. And you said something that is very important. The voice has an anatomical part of it, and it's considered an instrument just like an air instrument, but also a string instrument. That means we need air to produce it, but we need our cords to make the sound. So whenever you are changing your breathing, you can connect with your voice. You have to do diaphragmatic breathing, taking out these all things that are not part of your breathing, all accessory breathing, you have to take it out. But also what you have to think about is relaxing. Relaxing your jaw, relaxing your tongue, and be aware that you'll have some sounds <laughs> that you would never have listened from you going out. And for me, this part is totally a personal journey you have to record yourself, you have to hear yourself back, you have to work with your shame, whatever it is, 
if you think you sound silly, if you think you sound so childish or childlike, if you think, oh no, I sound like my mom or I sound like my dad, you have to move past that part of it. It's going to happen. Just be aware that it will happen. And for awakening your safe sense to our voice, I will say, start with the noises. We are so repressed with our own voices. Take out the words for the first part of it. Just like, okay, maybe as you said, this part of I love you and I really truly do love you would be very hard for me because I'm feeling super burned out. I don't want you to hurt me. So it will sound totally different that if you know that you're with somebody with whom you can shout, I love you. You're like, ah, you cannot imagine the passion that I have for you. So for me, it's very important, this connection part. You have to connect your breathing, you have to connect your sound, and then you have to connect your voice. So three steps for it. First, relate to your breathing like a mom breathing and the easiest way of doing it is putting your hands on your tummy your belly button and feeling as if relaxing how the air enters through your nose always because otherwise we will have our cord irritated and then when you exhale you start doing sounds just like Because you inhale by your nose and then exhale through your mouth and have fun with it it's not a core I mean it's not a chore it's not something that you have to do and you have to do it right and from there start hearing yourself how do you speak to your child how do you speak to your boss how do you speak to your husband how do you speak to yourself because we have this big voice in our head just like oh boy you have done it again <laughs> whatever no and i purposely use a lot of sounds so that we get used to that because most of the time i'm just like mm, ah, mm, no mm -hmm. so that you can start to relate on them so three steps for it relate to your breathing work on your breath second start with your sounds and third Put words to them. Put words to them. Awesome. Can you share with us a little practical exercise to take out our late night FM DJ voice? <laughs> so like Im imagine you're you're like a late late night DJ on FM radio <laughs> and like you want to uh, to announce that you're playing your next, I don't know, essential groups. So that is to say that we are on the appropriate environment and it's not only welcomed this expression, but it's even accepted. So, <laughs> I mean, I am starting to get red and embarrassed and, and shame coming out like, I am your late night fm dj and this is my voice i mean i i feel how the mask get in the way of no 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 because my professional voice has to come <laughs> first so yeah I, i'm i'm up for the challenge red and everything <laughs> we will make it easy one of the elements of the voice that we can control is tone so, tone. Um, and that's very good. Tone, yes, because it had it can be high or it can be low. So you can go down or down or down and then low and high, high, oh, high. Oh. And like mini mouse. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I know. It's funny. And that's the part I like, you know. <laughs> but think about it ten levels. Just like ten. one to ten. Mm -hmm. And imagine that 
your voice is level five. So mm -hmm. you can go up and you can go down. Yeah. If you go up, you're always using that to sound happier, to make some emotion, to connect with other people. Just like, you know what? I'm excited. I'm really excited. It's not that you will sound like that all the time. And something very important, it's not that you're going to sound like me because this is me and this is my voice. And you don't have to mimic it. You have to find your own, wherever it is. So you can go up here, just like, hi, 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 hi. hi. And then you can go, <laughs> again, and then you can go down, down, no. down, no. down, no. down, no. down. 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 Okay. So, down is hot. Down is hot. Yes. Down is hot. Okay, and we got it. Yes. Yeah, and it has a different ha a vibration and a volume a volume, but like special voluptuosity. It's voluptuous oh. to go down and to go up, it's like more like ah hectic. Hysterical, happy, neurotic, running to your to catch the plane. <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. So that's about childlike voice. Just like, na, 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 na. Just like, op, 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 op. That, that can translate as well as melody, but that's a different thing. We think that this stereotype of sexy. But you know what? Harry is really feminine. And you want men to be feminine. Like like the SMR voice that they are all talking like whispering. But when you're whispering, it's like you're only talking from your lips. Uh -huh. You don't feel the, the, the resonance. That, the vibration. The vibration. And it's also super hard on your cord. Okay. Because it's just like having uh, an air blower. Just like... And her blower. Yes, yes, yes. We don't want to whisper. This is not sexy. Avoid whispering. Avoid, avoid whispering. Avoid whispering. Yes. <laughs> yes. So going back to awakening your sensual voice, go down. Go down. Very, very down. Very, very, very down. Yes. And yeah. add a little bit of bossiness that you can create with this. Um, a little bossiness, uh, <laughs> liking it. Uh, finding this vibration, and of course it sounds silly because I'm doing something different from when I'm <laughs> what I'm saying. It's not the same if I use that voice to tell you that I'm very into you. That if I tell you, okay, come back, come down, and it's the down, and it's the earth. It's, mm. Mm. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with your voice. All of the five qualities can go up and down in a scale of three. But the real thing is that you have to find how do you sound and what do you want to express. Because it's not the same thing if I'm expressing desire, it's desire, or if I'm expressing passion, or if I'm expressing gratitude. Gratitude. And the motion will be different. The motion will be different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Know how you sound. Yeah. Know how you sound and know what you want to express. And I, I get from this little exercise an immediate shift in my brain state, in my awareness, in my brain state. Because in a way, it's like doing pranayama or doing breath work when you're talking and what you are talking and becoming aware on, on your speech. It's an immensely powerful tool of self-knowledge and self-congruency and finally a tool for coming forth into the world with all your potency, splendor, power and beauty which 
you must do because you're splendorous and the world is there waiting, needing your gifts. So tell us, Cynthia, please, how can we know more about our own boys working with you? Yes, for sure. I'm on Instagram and on Facebook, Cynthia Resendiz, just like my name. And I have a website with Amomibos. Amomibos. Dot com. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dot com. I'm, uh, I'm gonna Google can translate it, yes. Yeah, or you can for sure book a one on one session. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm starting a membership next year. So if you're if you are interested, you can contact me. You can contact Candia, of course. <laughs> As you know, sure, sure. Am, and who I am, or, or, or where can I be found? And I want to add to this part that you said self awareness bring us self congruency but also bring us self confidence yes self confidence because whenever you are there yes because whenever you are there you know how you're going to sound because you have connected your brain your heart and it's going out so yes that's very important for all of us that's very important in in a way here in Central the Poder, we define sensuality as sensing pleasure through your senses and expressing what you're feeling through movement. And it also goes to expressing through your own voice. So there's like this congruency that, that you say. So yeah, go to amomiboss.com, Google Google it. <laughs> if you need the translation, it's I love my voice. <laughs> Literally in Spanish.com. Find Cynthia, Cynthia Resendiz in Instagram and in Facebook and or click the link here around to, to know more about Cynthia's work and find your voice and express what you mean. And really become comfortable and confident on who and how you are. Thank you, Cynthia, so much. This is a very important set of tools that you shared with us. Very happy to have you here. Thank you. I yeah. want to add that I think all voices deserve to be heard. So that's why I'm doing this work. All vo voices deserve to be heard. Yeah. Make your voice be heard. Okay, until next time, remember to sense your fire so you can share the flame. And if you haven't already, go to www.centraldeepoder.com and get subscribed to the Central Sessions to get these episodes delivered weekly on your inbox. Catch you next time. <laughs>